Here is another puzzling question you might find difficult to solve. You are presented with four triangles. Each triangle has a number in the corner. And you need to calculate one of the missing numbers in the upper corner of the black triangle. You have four different choices. You have choice A, 1. You have choice B, 2. You have choice C, 3. And you have choice D, 4. Can you determine the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge together. Determining the pattern is the key to solving this challenge. For example, if you add up the numbers in the lower left corners, 6 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 in all triangles, you will get to the sum of 10. Same thing happens when you add up the numbers in the bottom right corners of the same triangles. 2 plus 3 plus 0 plus 5 also equals 10. So same logic can be applied to the upper right corners of the triangles. As you can see, triangles are colored to confuse you. So you're only concentrated on the numbers inside of each triangle, but you're not looking across multiple triangles. The correct answer to this problem is choice A, 1, because this is the math of getting into 10 with the missing number. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. When you see a question like this, you might ask yourself, how can it possibly be even more confusing? But the reality is that the answer to the question I'm about to show you is very simple. Let's look in more details. You're presented with the 3 by 3 matrix. Two of the shapes in the matrix are missing. They are located in the bottom row. And you have four possible choices for the answers. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look. The solution is not obvious, but it is very simple. Give yourself 10 to 20 seconds, maybe go to 30 seconds by pausing this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Are you ready? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. As I mentioned, the answer to this question is very simple. The pattern is represented in each row by decreasing number of diamonds. Let's look at the top row. You see that the top left square contains four black diamonds. The middle square in the top row contains only three diamonds. And then the right square in the top row contains only two diamonds. In the second row, the pattern reverses and it goes from right to left. And you see the same pattern of the white diamonds. Four goes down to three and then goes down to two. So in the bottom row, we need to follow the same pattern. The pattern will be the number of diamonds decreasing from four to two among the gray diamonds. So the correct answer here is choice A. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. This is one of my favorite questions because it is very frequently used in the test. You are presented with five crossing circles. All circles are of the different colors. There are numbers inside the circles as well as the numbers on the intersections of the circles. In this particular case, you are presented with five different circles, all of them different colors, and the numbers that you see on the screen are 13, 3, 4, 7, 5, 10, 1 and 15. There is also one number missing, which is highlighted with the question mark. You need to calculate the missing number. And the choices are choice A, 7, choice B, 8, choice C, 9, and choice D, 11. Give yourself a few seconds, maybe 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you get on the typical test to calculate the answer. Do you see the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution and solve this challenge together. As you might have figured out by now, sum of each numbers in the circle adds up to 16. For example, let's look at the green circle. We have numbers 13 and 3, and 13 plus 3 equals 16. In the blue circle, we have numbers 4 plus 7 plus 5, and all of them add up to 16. In the black circle, we have 1 and 15, also adds up to 16. And in the orange circle, we have 5 plus 1 plus 10, also equals 16. So to calculate question mark, which is the missing number, we need to add 3 plus 4 plus question mark and make an equation to make it equal 16. After doing the calculation, you see that the question mark and the missing number equals 9. So the correct choice here is choice C, 9. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test.
a lot of times you might be presented with the question on the test that will try to determine your knowledge of English words as well as how quickly you can extract these words from your memory. In this particular case, we are looking at four letters Q, A, A and U and you need to guess the word by combining these letters. Do you see the word? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Let's continue to see how we can get the correct answer together. As you might have figured out, the correct answer here is word aqua. The spelling of the final word is A-Q-U-A. And you can get to the correct answer by rearranging the letters on the screen. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Here's the interesting question, which is easy to understand, but at the same time, you will have a lot of fun solving it. You need to calculate the simple expression, 12 divided by 2 and then multiply it on the value in parentheses, which is 3 minus 1. Take a look closely and see if you can come up with the answer. There are three operations here, division, multiplication and subtraction. All you need to determine is which one to do first, second and third. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue and get it solved together. The order of operations in math tells us that the first expression we need to solve is in parentheses. We first need to calculate 3 minus 1. And obviously the answer is 2. The big question is what do we do next? The order PEMDAS tells us that we need to do multiplication and division. But what order doesn't mention is that we need to do it from left to right. And what's interesting, the acronym itself is a little bit confusing, because it shows multiplication first and then division. But in our case, we need to do division first and divide 12 by 2, and then do multiplication. Once we divide 12 by 2, we get to 6, and the final expression we need to solve would be 6 multiplied by 2. So the correct answer here is 12. So did you solve this challenge on your own? Was it easy for you? Please share your thought process and your solution in the comment section of this video. Here is a very cool question that you frequently see on the test. You are presented with four rectangles. In each one of these rectangles, there are different shapes. Each shape is of the different color. Three rectangles have shapes present, and fourth rectangle on the right has all the shapes missing. You have four different choices to identify the missing item in the sequence. Choices A, B, C and D. Do you think you can come up with the answer? Give yourself some time. You can pause this video to see if you can identify the pattern. Give yourself 5 to 10, maybe 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you will get in the real test. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. In most types of problems, there are typically multiple patterns present. For example, let's look at the color pattern. If you look closely, you see that the first shape inside the rectangle is always black, second shape is always purple, third shape is always white, and the rightmost shape is always yellow. The second pattern that you can see if you look closely is the pattern of rotating shapes. You can see that the rightmost shape in the previous rectangle always becomes the leftmost shape in the next rectangle. For example, the yellow arrow from the first rectangle becomes the black arrow in the second rectangle. If you are able to identify at least one of these patterns, you will be able to solve this problem. Let's look at each of the answers and try to exclude the incorrect answers. For example, choice A does match the color pattern. But if you look closely, the next shape after the circle should be triangle and not the elf shape as it is currently presented in the choice A. Choice B can be excluded because it doesn't match the color pattern. As you can see, the yellow shape and white shape should be swapped to match the color pattern. Choice C is the correct answer. It does meet requirements for both patterns. And choice D does not match the color pattern. Two rightmost shapes are yellow. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. But in case you need more questions like this, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. A lot of times you might get a question which asks you to determine the sales increase. You are typically presented with the graph which shows lines that represent different sales. 
In our case, we are represented with the chart that shows sales of cardio equipment from January to June, sales of bikes represented by the blue line, sales of elliptical represented by the orange line, and sales of treadmills are represented by the gray line. The question asks you to determine largest sales increase. Specifically, you need to determine which period represents the largest one month's number of item sales increase for cardio equipment sales. You have four different choices. Choice A, bikes from January to February. Choice B, bikes from February to March. Choice C, ellipticals, March to April. And choice D, treadmill, May to June. Do you see the answer? You may need to look closely to determine the correct answer for this question. Give yourself five to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the right solution. Are you ready? We're going to move forward and cover the answer for this problem and get to the solution together. To answer this question, we need to look at the graph closely. For each data point on the graph, we need to determine the actual value. And once we have all the numbers, we need to answer the question by looking at the differences for equipment sales from months to months. Specifically, in this case, you need to evaluate four different choices that are represented by answers A through D. Let's do it together. Based on the chart, bike sales increased by two from January to February, and the increase was from five to seven items sold. Bike sales also increased by two from seven to nine between February and March. Elliptical sales, on the other hand, increased by seven from March to April, jumping from two to nine. And treadmill sales increased by four between May and June, going up from two to six. So the correct answer here is choice C, elliptical sales from March to April, because jump was by seven from two to nine. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I am very excited to present you with simple, but at the same time very tricky question, which tests your math skills as well as attention to details. Florist has 77 beautiful plants. All but seven were sold. How many plants are left? You have four different choices. Choice A, seven. Choice B, 77. Choice C, 70. And choice D, 84. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. The answer to this question is very simple. Seven plants are left. The answer is hidden in the tricky worded sentence, all but seven sold. So the correct answer here is choice A, seven. Hopefully you've read this question correctly, understood it very well, and solved it on your own. I'm excited to share with you a cool question which is easy to understand, but which doesn't have an obvious answer. You're presented with the two by three matrix. This matrix has arrows inside. There are two types of arrows, solid arrows, and then there are arrows that consist of three different shapes. There are six possible spaces in the two by three matrix. Five shapes are present and one shape is missing. You're presented with four different choices to identify the missing shape which is highlighted by the question mark. You have choices A, B, C, and D. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can identify the right answer. Did you figure out the correct answer? Let's continue to see if we can get to the correct solution together. To solve these types of challenges, you always need to look for patterns. And there are three different patterns present in the sequence. Let's look at the pattern one. If we start from the upper left corner and go clockwise, you see that the arrows change alternatively in each subsequent box. Second pattern is that inside the box, solid arrows rotate clockwise. And then the third pattern, which is a little harder to identify, is that the previous arrow points to the next arrow start. This is why the missing part, the part that you would need to identify, contains an arrow placed in the right corner pointing to the left. So the correct answer here is choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question 
and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. But in case you need more problems and solutions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. I'm extremely excited to share with you the question that tests your pattern recognition skills. You're presented with three columns. Each column has three numbers. In the first column, we see numbers 2, 7, 5. In the second, middle column, we see numbers 2, 3, and 4. And in the last, rightmost column, column number 3, we see numbers 10, 21, and then one number missing. You need to find the missing value, which is highlighted by question mark. You need to find the missing value, and you have four choices to choose from. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 16. Choice C, 27. And choice D, 36. Do you think you can recognize missing value? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. The most important skill to solve these types of problems is pattern recognition skill. To recognize the pattern, you need to look closely into each column. Selective values in columns 1 and 2, by multiplication, get to the value in column 3. And this is our pattern. Let's take a closer look for the values that are already present. If we multiply 5 by 2, we get to the value of 10. Second set of values represented by the middle row. 7 multiplied by 3 equals 21. So the missing values here can be calculated by multiplying 2 by 4 and the end result would be equal to 8. So the correct answer to this problem is choice A, 8. I also wanted to share with you one of the typical mistakes people make as part of answering these types of questions. People start looking at the columns themselves. But unfortunately, there's no pattern just by looking in the values in column 1, since pattern just doesn't exist. If you look only at the values in column 1, or only at the values in column 2, or only at the values in column 3, you will not be able to come up with the answer. You have to look across and take a global view across multiple columns to get to the correct solution. Can you do me a favor? If you have a better way of solving this challenge, please share your thought process in the comment section of this video. And now, here's the question for you to try. If you can calculate the answer, please leave it in the comment section of this video so I can validate it and give you my feedback. Here's the question. Candidate, imagine yourself, is taking a test with 60 multiple choice questions and so far answered 60% of the first 20 questions correctly. What percent of the remaining questions does candidate need to answer correctly to get 70% rate on the test? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 60%, choice B, 65%, choice C, 70%, and choice D, 75%. Can you calculate the answer? Please make sure to leave the calculated answer in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck! I wanted to share with you a cool question which started showing up on the tests very recently. You're presented with the 3 by 3 matrix. Each square of the matrix contains another matrix inside with the 3 by 3 small squares. There are different colors inside 3 by 3 small squares. In this case, we see gray, white, and black. One 3 by 3 square is missing, and you need to select out of the four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. And your goal is to determine which of the following shapes completes the figure. Take a close look and see if you can identify the missing item. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. Well, when you look for the first time, you might be intimidated by this matrix. But the answer actually is very simple. If we look closely at the smaller matrices, you see that the letters are being formed. You see that in the upper left corner, black boxes form a letter V. And if we look at the upper right corner, you see that the letter V also shows up. But now it's turned clockwise from the previous position. Let's go to the second row. In the second row, you can recognize letter T. And this letter shows up in the left column. 
But if we look in the middle row, in the right column, you see that the same letter T now is turned 90 degrees from the previous position. So now, if we follow the same logic, you can recognize letter V in the bottom left corner. According to the pattern that we've identified, this letter should be turned 90 degrees in the bottom right corner. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. In case you need to practice with more questions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. The types of questions you're looking at is very frequently used on the test. Typically, you're being asked to determine the item which does not belong to the group. And you're presented with multiple items. In our choice, we have choices A, B, C, and D. Each item is represented as a square which contains multiple different items inside. And you need to determine the item which does not belong to this particular pattern or sequence. Do you see the answer? Please take a look to see if you can come up with the solution. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds, maybe 10 to 20 seconds, to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? Let's continue to see how we can go and get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured out by now, there is always a pattern that you need to detect to answer these types of questions correctly. And a lot of times, there are items that are designed to confuse you. So let me first walk you through the items that are designed to confuse you. You have small circles, and there are four small circles in each of the square. And the small circles do not have any patterns. We also have triangles. Some squares have two triangles, and some squares only have one. But there is no pattern here. The pattern is actually defined by the half circle. And as you can see, all half circles are attached to the corners of the square. You see this in the shapes A, B, and C. But in shape D, half circle is placed in a different location. It is in the bottom middle of the square. This is why the item that doesn't belong to the group is the choice D. So the correct answer here is choice D. Let's recap. The pattern here is that all half circles are attached to the corners of the square. But half circle in the shape D is placed in a different place than the others. The half circle there is in the lower part of the square. This is why the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I'm excited to take advantage of the opportunity and share with you how to solve these types of problems on the test. Typically, when you get a problem, you need to determine which object does not belong to the group. In this particular case, you need to determine which square doesn't belong to the group. You're presented with four different squares, choices A, B, C, and D. Each square contains two circles inside. In the large circle, quarter of each circle is missing, and instead replaced with the small circle. All squares also have triangles in the corner. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. The key to solving this challenge is to detect the pattern. This is the skill that you need to develop to be successful in the test. Because there are two shapes here present in this question, triangles and circles, you should try to detect pattern among triangles and then among circles. In this particular question, there is only one pattern, pattern of the triangles. But there are some sophisticated questions in the test which might include patterns for both shapes. In this particular case, the pattern is that the square should contain the equal number of black and white triangles in the corners. Triangles in the square A positioned diagonally across each other. White triangles are located in the upper left corner and in the bottom right corner. And black triangles are located in the bottom left corner and in the upper right corner. You can see that the same pattern exists in the shape B, two white triangles and then two black triangles. And in the shape C, two black triangles on the left and two white triangles on the right. But if we look at the choice D, you see that there are four black triangles in the corners. 
Circles in this picture do not have a pattern, and their primary goal is to confuse you. If you look at the circles closely, you see that the large small circle pattern doesn't exist. We have black white, shape B black white, shape C white black, and then shape D white white. Based on this information about the circles, we should ignore them and focus on the triangles inside the squares. This is why the odd shape, the shape that doesn't belong to the group, is the one that does not have equal distributions of all colors in the corners. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. This is very interesting question which requires you to do calculations based on the pattern that you need to detect. You're presented with two squares. Small square is located inside the larger square. There are numbers in all corners of the larger square as well as in all corners in the smaller square. If we start looking at the numbers in the upper left corner and go clockwise, you see the numbers 15, 11, 32 and 23. In the smaller square, the numbers are 22, 13 and 5. And one number is missing. And this is the one that you need to calculate. Your choices are choice A, 1, choice B, 7, choice C, 12, choice D, 17. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds. Possibly pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you see the pattern? Did you calculate the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. As you might have guessed, the pattern here is that the difference between numbers in diagonally opposite corners of the larger and smaller squares is 10. For example, let's look at the upper left corner. The difference between 15 and 5 is 10. If we look at the bottom right corner, the difference between 32 and 22 is 10. And the lower left corner, the difference between 23 and 13 is 10 as well. So to calculate the missing number, we need to calculate the difference between 11 and 10. And the difference is 1. So the correct answer here is choice A, 1. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage. Please also check out additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net. Please leave your feedback, corrections or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.